Okay. First of all, this is the no, give you the first glance of uh, uh, the, the experiment from the sky. You can see uh, now it's a, a complete uh, facility of the array of cosmic ray uh, uh, extensive air shower. And uh, uh, in cross from uh, this point to this point is about 1.3 kilometer. And uh, uh, the total size of this uh, area is also uh, 1.3 uh, square kilometer. And then with the many uh, you know, the dots as uh, detectors, and in the middle, we have the water chunk of detector uh, with a total area, uh, area of uh, uh, 78,000 square meter. And then this just gives you the idea of the geological position of, uh, uh, you know, in the, in, the, in, the, in the country. Basically, this part is uh, the Qingdang Plateau. It's the highest place in the world. So we just catch the edge of this uh, plateau, find out to the sun place at the height of uh, 4,410 meters. And then, uh, you, know, you know, it's a good place to build this kind of uh, uh, detectors. The very interesting part of this detector, you can see there is a lot of waters actually in this region. You see, this is the, you know, we built, basically we built a uh, tunnel to guide the water surround this area instead of going through, you know, we still have a little water going through, but the, you know, the water is very, very important for this type of experiment. We totally uh, spend a lot of uh, water just gathered from the uh, streams. And then uh, let's uh, introduce you the instrument first to do uh, this uh, Cavastron search. Uh, oops. So this is a layout of the detectors. Um, instead of that uh, beautiful picture, now it's a sketch of uh, this uh, detectors array. Uh, again, this is the, from here to here is 1.3 kilometers. Basically in the central part, you see, we have the full coverage of the all kinds of detectors. So in this part is in total is one square kilometer. Uh, um, covered basically by uh, this type of detectors, which is the one square meter of a centimeter detector. You can see uh, you, with, with the fibers, we guide the light from the centimeter plates to a uh, photo tube at the middle to get the uh, information about uh, the, the particle density and also arriving time of the particles. This is the important part. Um, basically, we have uh, 5,000 pieces uh, to cover the whole range with the spacing of 50 meters in the middle of the array. And uh, for this uh, skirt area, and we have uh, the spacing a larger uh, reach to 30 meters uh, between the detectors, basically uh, serves as a veto to get to, to make sure the shower is falling inside of this array. Uh, and this uh, detectors also, this array is also covered by uh, this uh, uh, big muon detectors. This is the seven meter diameter in this region and the pure water inside <coughs> the one uh, PMT set to the center and to read the muon signals. And instead of to get uh, uh, electrons and photons to pollute this detector, so we have the overburden of uh, 2.5 meters above the, of this detector make sure it's only muons get into. And in the central part, as I mentioned, this size is the 78,000 square meters of water chunk of detector inside just look like this, okay? Uh, with the 4.5 meters of water um, uh, filled up. And then at the center, we have uh, every cell, we have uh, the photo tubes there to measure the signals. Uh, the big one is about 20 inch of this, uh, you know, the main detectors. And also we have the three inches uh, tube say, side by side with this kind. Uh, this is um, two part of the main, main part of this uh, uh, experiment to do the uh, photon measurements, okay? So this is inside of the water chunk of detector. This picture just give you an idea once uh, uh, you have uh, something around 10 TeV 
uh, showers falling in this area, then basically just uh, line up everybody in this uh, uh, detector. And uh, as I said, the, the area is this, and uh, the total channel we have, like this uh, this combination, we have uh, uh, 3,120 of this kind of uh, detectors. The energy range um, basically uh, is from uh, 100 GeV to 10 TeV for this uh, type of detector. And uh, for the, uh, the array, the detector array, as I described, totally we have 5,220, uh, 200, 216 uh, detectors as the scintillated detectors. And also we have 1,188, the muon detectors uh, just I described, that, uh, that uh, enormous big, big detector. By using this with the spacing of 15 meters, we can cover the energy range from 10 TeV to 10 PeV. Um, this just give you an idea, once the shower uh, falling uh, down to this uh, uh, array, this is typically a one PV event, uh, you know, with the size of this. This is a one quarter. This part is the uh, WCDA is a water chunk of detectors. So you see for this, uh, you know, almost a quarter of the detect array being lined up by this e one event. So, the idea is that uh, we can use uh, the muon to do the separation between proton shower here and uh, the, you know, if we have a chance to catch the 1 PeV photons, then the, you, you can see, you can tell the difference immediately by using this uh, number of the muons measured by this, uh, you know, uh, indicated by the circles here. And uh, for the gamma ray events, you have much, much fewer uh, muons. Being, being, being measured in this event. I will give you uh, more details about this part, okay? So we have a, a data acquisition system uh, on site, uh, basically uh, this uh, uh, supported by a very uh, advanced uh, computer system on site. Uh, you, you cannot imagine at a, such a remote area, we, we actually build up with such a, you know, the, the computing system, okay, almost uh, now it's almost 10,000 10, cores of the compute CPUs there. So this is a pretty powerful uh, computing uh, system. And then the way we build up our uh, basically trigger, trigger this data acquisition with the, 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 the data read of the four gigabytes per second. This is the data, uh, you know, eventually we sort out the event to store it here temporarily. Uh, we have the capability to, to hold the data for uh, uh, one month almost here before sending to uh, uh, the computer center in the IHP in Beijing. And uh, you see, uh, this, uh, we have so many uh, uh, temporary storage there. And also we have uh, the bandwidth of, of 2.4 gigabit per second to transmit the data from this, this computer center to, to the, to the uh, computer center in Beijing every moment. This is the hardware, and then there is the software. Now, this, uh, now let's see the operation of this uh, system. Um, basically, we had uh, uh, three stages of the operation. At the first phase, uh, we have only the half of the detectors built uh, in the whole array in this uh, kind of strange shape, okay? But this strange shape is very, very useful. It started from the, uh, 2019, um, the end of 2019. And uh, we spent almost 11 months to reach the, the first uh, piece of the, the scientific result, uh, which is this uh, discovery of 12 uh, pematrons by using this uh, part of the ray. And uh, be before that, actually, we have uh, uh, oh, at the moment, uh, we have only one uh, water pool. We, we actually have three pores, you know, to, 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 to form this the whole WCDA. At the moment, we have only one uh, pond actually has uh, been operating. And uh, second, second phase, they call the uh, three quarters of detectors, just like an even more stringent shape of the array. Uh, 
by the end of uh, 2020. And then we, we, we had something around eight months of the operation with this kind of strange shape. And now we have, at that moment, we have uh, two ponds uh, working together. And uh, at the July of two, 2021, we built up everything, um, just the three, three ponds together and the whole array. Okay, so that is the, uh, the last uh, moment of the construction of the whole array. And then we go to uh, this uh, operation uh, phase. Now I just give you some idea about how stable the system is. Uh, 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 sorry about the spelling. Uh, you see, uh, this, uh, um, this is the duty cycle recorded in last year. This is 2022. Basically, you, you, you see uh, almost no interruption of the operation. This is for, uh, for, for WCD. Uh, no, this is uh, for, uh, for uh, a ground array. Okay. And uh, you can see uh, how many detectors actually are, uh, is alive. So you can see this is number uh, actually keep uh, uh, going very uh, smoothly with uh, some kind of uh, this big, uh, you know, big loss. This is uh, basically uh, due to a uh, well thunder, the, 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 the thunder, the, the, you know, the striking to our array. Basically, we lost something like uh, the 200 pieces of this, uh, this scintillator detectors. Then we just recover it very quickly and keep the whole system working uh, smoothly. In the end, we have this kind of duty cycle reached to something like 99.6% uh, of the duty cycle. And this is the, the water chunk of detector. So you can see the similar situation. The, the operation is very uh, smooth and uh, the duty cycle reaches to 98.6%. Uh, uh, and uh, the number of the detectors, remember we have this uh, 3,120 indicated by this dash nine, and uh, this is a real number we have, you know, keeping the uh, alive. And this is to give you some uh, amazing number. Uh, the data actually uh, uh, recorded uh, in terms of number of events, we got one training uh, in last year uh, for the low energy event and the 70 billion for the high energy events basically uh, indicated by uh, the refer to uh, the, the events measured by uh, the ground array. So we had the simulation uh, done very well as well. We have one billion of low energy uh, simulation to support uh, the reconstruction of this one trillion events and the 0.7 billion events for this, uh, you know, uh, came to a event. Uh, then we have this coverage by using this detect continuously for 24 hours. At any moment, we have the coverage of the one third of the array of the sky. And uh, then we have the full coverage uh, uh, 24 hours for this kind of shape in our sky, basically in our northern sky. And uh, of course, this kind of detector is very good for the transient phenomena. For example, like this uh, very famous GRB now, that's 2020-1009A. Uh, so basically, uh, this gives you this idea. This is the start point, and then uh, this is the finish point of this uh, burst. So this is the advantage of this kind of large field of view detector. And uh, the second issue to do this kind of search for paratron, per, um, paratron of course, is, uh, that, that requires a very strong capability of uh, separation between gamma rays and uh, hadrons. So let's go to the first uh, for this uh, low energy part of the WCDA. So basically uh, you have this kind of a footprint in our water pool for the uh, events. If we know this is gamma ray event, for example, from the crab direction, and then you can compare with the almost a similar energy of the proton shower, that is much more spread out. So you can somehow build up some kind of a parameter to separate this, you know, to for this kind of compactness. Right? This is more compact than this. 
So once you build up some parameters, you can get this kind of distribution. This is a proton-like events, and this is gamma-ray-like events. Then you can make a uh, you know clock at some level to make sure you have sufficient uh, you know survival rate for gamma ray showers, and uh, simultaneously you have uh, the big separation effect for the uh, proton showers. For example, like this, this from those numbers reduced down to this kind of number. Uh, once you have the heat uh, for the one shower greater than uh, five, four to 500, and then you certainly have the, the separation power, something like 10 to the minus three to surprise, uh, surprise the proton background. For the um, ground array, um, it is much easier job by using muon simulation, a muon information measured by muon array. So here you just get, so you, you just do a very simple simple thing here. This is the number of muons measured by all this 1,188 detectors, and you just add them up and get this uh, you know this number of the muons. And this is a number you measured from the scintillated detectors. Uh, we call this total number of electrons, and then you have this uh, you know the clear separation between gamma ray showers and the proton showers. So if you make a cut over here, with the, which is a very simple thing, so just take the ratio of the number of muons versus number E. If this ratio is less than one over 230, then you know this is the, you know, you can choose this as the uh, photon-like shower. And this thing is very clean. And basically you can, you can do that uh, by using this kind of thing to check with the crab. You know, if you look at the direction uh, of a crab within the, uh, the, the one degree region, and then uh, this is the number of events you measured um, in total. This is cosmic ray, basically. And then you apply this kind of cut on you on this events, and then you get this distribution. Uh, at the 100 TeV level, this number is something like uh, uh, 10 to minus four to surprise the background. And uh, if you go to the 500 TeV, this number becomes even much, much better. It's 10 to the minus five. And then if you now you measure the, the spectrum from uh, the, 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 uh, the, the crab labula, and you see for this region, uh, basically you have more than one order of magnitude signal uh, above the background. That's called the background frame measurement, pretty much. Okay. Then there is a cal calibration issue. Um, how can, can we get to the good uh, angular resolution that are pretty much based on the timing? So we have to have a very good timing uh, calibration. And then we have to check our point interaction. And also we check our angular resolution as well. Um, how do we do that? Now, pretty much we just rely on this so-called the right rabbit protocol which is the, the fiber network based, the clock synchronization system. This guy is actually is a, just look like a very uh, uh, normal switches, just like this. We totally, we use the five, 500 pieces of these switches to connect the whole array. Every piece of the scintillated detectors and the water channel detectors, we have this kind of connection uh, you know, to, to make sure we have uh, the time synchronized at uh, something around uh, uh, 0.2 nanosecond. Actually, uh, sometimes we can get the good as better as uh, 100 pic picosecond as well. So that's guaranteed that we have, uh, you know, uh, the, the timing uh, of the each detector is uh, synchronized very well. However, this thing is not rich to every uh, cell for WCDA. We have a cluster of uh, this kind of cells, something around nine. Uh, so we need the, the, that means that every uh, uh, nine cells, we have uh, uh, this kind of uh, timing at uh, the 0.2 nanosecond level. However, we have a cable connection between uh, uh, the, the, the each cells to the central part of the cluster, 
the, the, so we have to we have uh, cables, we have uh, you know uh, electronics that has to be uh, calibrated as well. So we build up this uh, LED illuminated uh, fiber system, fiber network to you see this is a fiber and then reach to this detector. And we can use this system again to reach the calibration uh, accuracy of uh, 0 0.2 nanosecond as well by using this system. And then, then we can do uh, this uh, uh, pointing uh, uh, calibration. Um, so basically we're using a standard candle, which is the crab labula. And at this time now even get a much better a tour of uh, uh, this uh, gamma ray burst. You know, this gamma ray burst is so amazing. Actually, uh, within, uh, uh, within a 270 seconds, that reaches to the, the significance of this exposure, even larger than the crab measurement for 508 days. That's just amazing. You know, by using this, you can do very well, uh, you know, pointing uh, direction uh, calibration. That gave us an idea about the accuracy about the 0 0.02 degree as the, our, you know, pointing uh, measurements. And also because those two guys are uh, a point source, so we can use them to directly measure the, our pointing, uh, our angular resolution to see the PSF, the size of PSF. Uh, for example, like at the 1 to 12 TV using a water chunk of detector, and then you see at the low end, low end of the energy, we have the peak, um, PSF size just like this. This is directly measured by uh, WCDA. You see the total exposure time uh, we have this kind of significance. And at the high end of this, uh, at the 10 TV level, the PSF reduced down to this size, okay? And uh, something around the zero to 0 0.2 degree. And uh, at the, the, by using this uh, uh, big array uh, for at the 12 or 20 TV level, the, spit, the, the, the PSF function is something around the 0 0.3 degree, but uh, once you get a higher energy uh, to uh, uh, something like 100 TV and above, this reduced down to 0 0.15 degree, okay? Actually, you can go to the simulation as well to, to, to verify this, and uh, then uh, this is a number. Um, basically, uh, by using this uh, detectors with the spacing of 15 meters, so first of all, we got the you know accuracy of the shell rotation is something around the three meters. Okay, this is important to do the energy uh, measurements. One, uh, you have to know where the, the, the shell is. Uh, this is the one thing. The second thing is uh, I just mentioned. This is a zero point two six degree of the uh, angular resolution. Um, by using the same ratio, you can verify yourself by uh, comparing with the, what I mentioned, this kind of measurement. And then this gives you the idea of the energy dependence and also uh, the, uh, the, the, the zenith angle dependence. So, for example, like this is uh, almost a vertical light showers, and this is a, a much more inclined shower uh, below a 50 degree. Okay, you see, this is the uh, uh, and uh, the angular, uh, that's just cool. That is the, the core resolution. This is angular resolution. Okay. Okay, and then there's uh, the, 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 the energy. How do we know the energy of the shower? Um, basically, uh, for the measurements of using the ground array, you have this kind of a footprint, and each detectors, you actually you have the number of the electrons. Uh, no, the charge particles measured here. Okay, so uh, actually, this is not only the charge particles. Our detector is covered by uh, 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 0.5 uh, millimeter, no, five millimeters of uh, uh, lead plate. So basically, that converts the uh, photons, uh, gamma rays, into uh, pairs of electrons can be measured by this scintillator detector. So you have a total number of detectors measured, uh, number of particles measured, uh, next to this function. You can build up this as natural distribution, the distribution function. As I said, you have to know the core location uh, rather good 
and then you have this measurement of distance from the shallow axis, and then you have numbers versus this, and eventually you find out that this is a typical event, um, just fit by this uh, function called the uh, uh, modified NKG function, and then you have the quite good measurement at the five meter, uh, 50 meters as the number we choose as the you know, indicator, as the estimator of the energy. So if you use this to do the measurement of the energy, then uh, something uh, we have uh, uh, this kind of the resolution at the 100 TeV. So for, for showers uh, less than 20 degree, we have uh, quite a good uh, energy resolution, something as around 14%. Okay, um, quite a, a symmetric Gaussian distribution here. And then uh, if you look at the different energy, we have this kind of a response function. At the lower energy, of course, the, the response it becomes worse, but the, at the energy above the 300, above 100 TeV, this is quite good, just like this. And uh, this is the energy resolution changing with energy as well. This is based on the simulation from this kind of curve. And then you have the non idea uh, how the resolution changes from 30% reduced down to something around 10%, okay? At the highest energy. Here is the one PV, here's 100 TV. So this is the idea. And uh, uh, to do this at a very high energy, like a Pravatron search, the people is worrying about uh, do we have any kind of the you know beam to beam migration to uh, to pollute your measurement at the very high energy part? For example, like a, a PEV events. Okay, this is very important. You have to have this kind of uh, uh, curve to check the they call the energy purity at each beam. For example, like this highest beam, you can cap you can calculate how much of this uh, you know lower the beams to to min to, to mix into this beam to generate uh, some kind of pollution. So for even a very high energy uh, events, for example, around the PEV, every event actually we carry out even more hair, careful work to try to, you know, to understand our energy better by using a simulation tool. Basically the simulation has been checked many, many times uh, to, to, to compare with the real events. So once we have uh, one event above the 500 TeV, we do this kind of uh, you know, simulation for each event, uh, something around the 10K of the events generated based on some kind of a spectrum. And then by using the cut of uh, the measurements, according to our estimate, estimator, for example, like this guy, or the, 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 the row, row 50, yeah, we just mentioned that one. And then you can select the range which uh, indicated your measurements to see the distribution of this, uh, you know, the, the simulated event. That gives you this idea, for example, like there's a 500 TV events, you certainly have kind of the spread out down to the something around the 200 something, okay? So that means this event could be, there are some uh, uh, possibility. You can make a calculation based on this curve to see how much it could be polluted by low energy uh, showers. Okay, this is a very important step once you are dealing with a very high energy event. Okay, then it's a survey the source. Once you have everything down there, then you can do this job. Uh, this is a very simple. Basically, as I said, once you choose, once you have this kind of the photon events so picked out. Uh, by using the muon card, and then you have the energy resolution uh, shown that before, and then you, you have this uh, collection of uh, so-called uh, UHE photons, which means uh, greater than 100 TeV. So once you have so many photons, and then you just look at the distribution sky of those uh, number of the photons, at that moment we have only uh, something like 530 uh, events above 100 TeV, and then the, suddenly you can see those 500 events actually make some clusters in the sky, just like this, okay? So that immediately indicate there are some source probably associated with this kind of clusters. 
uh, what you found by using those events. Now this number is much, much larger, something uh, more than uh, almost 2,000 of the events we have. So that indicates probably we have more sources of already some, some seen by uh, this detector. And uh, then they use a uh, relatively hot card. As I mentioned, at the 100 TeV, we have this kind of 10 to minus four rejection power. And then we set to the rather high standard. Uh, those numbers, those sources must, uh, you know, greater than seven, seven sigma to be uh, the candidate of the parametric. And by doing so, uh, as I, you know, just pointed out here, we have uh, 12 clusters found. And then we find that those guys probably associated with something. Here is the flux in terms of uh, the drug uh, flux. So something that's really uh, uh, surprising, for example, like this uh, 1825, uh, you know, the flux is much stronger than, than crop. Okay. Here is the maximum energy measured at the moment. Uh, we have the, the highest energy at the 1.4 1, 1 PV. Okay. For those kind of high energy events, as I said, it's very, very important. Um, in, in, uh, in the purpose of the search for uh, uh, parametry, once you found uh, not uh, even the one PV photon, that is guaranteed. Uh, this is the parametry. Okay. So to find out this kind of high energy events is very important. Now, currently, we have more than 10 uh, PEV photons recorded, and everyone is well, uh, everyone is well calculated. Uh, sorry, I missed some words there. For example, like this guy. So what we do is that you can make the, you know, estimate of the estimate of the, 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 the chance probability for this event. Could it be, uh, you know, uh, it, it, if it is the fake event uh, as the background of the cosmic ray, then you can do this kind of uh, exercise. This is the total number you measured in this direction. And then uh, apply this card, you know, this uh, number of muons. P particularly for this event, you have uh, only six muons measured with the total number of uh, 6,000 of the you know, electron numbers measured by the ground ray. And you know this num this event is very very clean in terms of uh, you know number of muons. So now this is the card. Then uh, you know this is the background that you have. And if you have such card, and then you have the chance probability was very very small, like uh, you know the zero zero three percent. So that makes sure this event is a, a photon. And then uh, if you look at this direction and they immediately probably give you an idea, the source could be uh, some kind of, uh, you know, as uh, is the parameter. And uh, this is a sky map, if you just look at, and uh, those guys are lined up uh, in our uh, galactic plane that make, uh, you know, a lot of confidence for us. This is the known source. And, uh, uh, you know, if you put this known source together, this is uh, indicated by this uh, blue circles. Uh, this is, you go to the uh, TV catalog, and then you can find almost everyone actually is already, you know, uh, the old friends in that catalog, you can find them, except this one. You know, then this is new discovery of the, for the, for the source uh, in terms of the TV source, and then this is 100 TV source, okay? Now we have many more than only one here. And then the second step is to look at the uh, counterpart of the, 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 those uh, parameters. This is a list of the source. And then we go to the, you know, to the sky and to go through the old literature to try to figure out uh, what kind of sources are associated with this kind of thing. You can see, uh, uh, pulsars and the pulsars nebula and also uh, SNR here. Most importantly, uh, we found that this uh, uh, young massive cluster, stock uh, massive cluster, uh, stock cluster, for example, like this W43 and also uh, this uh, uh, Cygnus region. Okay, so those are very interesting things 
to, to, to look. And uh, even more interesting thing to look at, you don't see uh, so many uh, SNRs there. Uh, pretty much, you see a lot of uh, uh, post-op nebula, okay? Then uh, we have to go, go through uh, now for more, much more detailed uh, uh, study for those kind of sources. Uh, the first one, of course, is the crab nebula. Now we can go uh, this kind of, uh, you know, the, 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 the deep uh, investigation on the sources to figure out what is uh, the, 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 the parametrons. Let me uh, give you this example of uh, the, the crab nebula. Um, this is a very interesting uh, uh, source because we have uh, knowledge, very detailed knowledge about this part, uh, about this source. Uh, for example, it's ch this change our measurement. So you know the size of uh, this inner ring, and also you find uh, some lot in, in the ring, you know. So this probably give us idea where the part particles are being accelerated, okay. And then uh, this is a measurement of the whole spectrum. Uh, this is the very important uh, step once you go to the de detailed uh, investigation for a source to look at the spectrum. This spectrum uh, by using uh, uh, WCDA and uh, KM2A, basically we have the full coverage of the uh, 3.5 orders of magnitude. And uh, you, you have this kind of uh, you know, measurements. And then we know this uh, uh, source uh, very well. Basically this is an uh, electron positron source. And uh, if you have, you, you use this all kind of the calculation to, 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 to show, to support, to make a very simple model, to try to understand this uh, uh, emissions from the energy, the X-rays and the gamma rays, and then now it's a high energy gamma rays, and together seems to be a very well, under, uh, well, well understood the model. This is a very simple thing um, by you, uh, with these two peaks, one is a synchrotron, uh, emission, and also uh, you have this uh, uh, inverse complex scattering. Um, at the first glance, seems to be very well explained by using this single model, very simple model. However, if you look at more details, uh, you know, to, to, to plot like this delta sigma to see the data versus the model, how well this can be, uh, you know, explained, seems to be as not so satisfied. If you look at the, you know, uh, each energy range, for example, that's a WCDA range and the slightly uh, this uh, KM2A range, you know, uh, it's not uh, you know completely uh, satisfactory for this uh, uh, model. So that made be the people to look into more detail. For example, like this part, you see above the uh, 50 TeV. Actually, uh, this model cannot uh, very well explain the data. Uh, at that moment, it's something around the four sigma effect already. And uh, the shape of the spectrum seems to be not really well done by this model, okay? Then it make people think, probably we need uh, some kind of new component for this, uh, uh, for this uh, source. And, uh, you know, uh, once people did this, uh, if you put this kind of, uh, uh, proton components there with the spectrum of the e to the minus two uh, reach to some kind of energy cart above the 10 PeV. And then, you know, the situation becomes much better. If you look closely for this energy range above the one GeV by using Fermi together with uh, uh, loss of data, almost all data is actually being explained very well, okay? So this is a very strong indication, probably, we really need uh, some kind of proton here. Then uh, this is uh, a very likely, uh, this could be, you know, probably the first one we will recognize as the uh, proton source for the cosmic ray. And of course, this is not uh, all the case. Uh, for example, like uh, this uh, very complicated uh, region of uh, uh, J1908. This is a complete region here. And uh, uh, this is the topic we're going to go through. But uh, certainly, if you look at the spectrum only, 
even with the loss of part, you know, cover the energy almost reached the 100, uh, 1 PeV. And at, the, at the, this moment, we already have the event beyond the 100, uh, beyond the PeV for the source. But seems to be, uh, you know, people can do uh, this uh, good enough job to use the both uh, hydronic origin or the, the polyp origin to explain the data. That's kind of amazing. So that brings us to the issue. Probably we really needed something better to look into this uh, source because all of these 12 sources uh, except the, uh, uh, the crab nebula, almost all of them has the extension, the angular uh, extension. So for example, like this source inside we have uh, multiple things as a post summer nebula and also SMR. So for this kind of things, so if we have the angular resolution like uh, 0 0.3 degree, like this, not so, you, you cannot you know, get a better idea which one actually uh, produced this kind of spectrum. And uh, probably that's the reason we cannot do good job to separate of them. That will bring us to uh, think about the synergy uh, with all the experiment, for example, like the CDA, Astray, and also some new stuff. I will mention this here. The problem is that we know we need, you know, this uh, uh, much better angular resolution detector to help us to try to do this job to separate the sources inside of the origins of the inside the source. However, if you look at this uh, updated based on this measurement, we updated the, the, uh, uh, the this, uh, you know, the crab spectrum, and then we have this completely new, uh, the, based on the measurements, now is not the uh, simulation of uh, this uh, uh, sensitivity curve. So if you look at that, we need uh, this, uh, you know, the, the, the pointing devices to do this job better than nozzle to us. However, the sensitivity for current uh, the instrument like a has like a magic like a very task that cannot reach the range we are talking about around 100 TeV and above, right? So it, enormous dif dif difference in the sensitivity. That means we cannot really reach this region. So something new we need. Of course, the CTA can help us quite a bit. You know, according to this curve, uh, this is a CTA. Uh, but uh, you, you can tell at the energy about 100 TeV, this is, seems to be it's not enough as well. Um, this is situation of the CTA. Currently, we already have the uh, LST operated and also the, the construction for LST is uh, st still going. Uh, and, uh, but uh, now NASA is already built. So we need uh, this kind of uh, detectors uh, badly. Now we have this, uh, the news about uh, Astri. Uh, recently, we will have a uh, workshop with uh, uh, NASA Astri together. Uh, so this is uh, what I learned, uh, uh, maybe, maybe not correctly. Uh, nine SST will form an array here. Uh, I make uh, the estimate by myself. This number probably is not correct. It's a 0 0.5 kilometer, square kilometer covered. Uh, um, anyway, according to this, we have the sensitivity around the 10 TV here, okay? Seems to be better than uh, CTA. So this will provide quite a bit, uh, quite an important uh, data uh, to do this kind of uh, survey in the, in the future. And this guy will be built by, uh, by 2025, according to this uh, you know, schedule. And uh, we are thinking about this as well, just because I, I just mentioned out, uh, if we have something, we really need uh, this uh, ISCT uh, uh, technique to make sure we have the angular resolution at this big to do the you know, separation between uh, origins in the source, which is the, you know, measured by Russell, which cannot give us the idea about uh, you know, detailed stuff. So if we have the array of the, of the Cherenkov telescopes on top of uh, Lasso, 
and then we can do the, to do quite a good things. First of all, uh, uh, we have we can take the advantage from a muon content measurements by loss. Each shower hit the oldest ground, and then we have the muon simultaneously measured. This simulation result shows the capability of uh, the background separation can be improved quite a bit here at the high energy part. So that uh, you know give us uh, the idea if we run the detector for one source at uh, at one source by something like uh, 400 hours plus, then we can reach the sensitivity comparing with uh, you know nozzle sensitivity here. So this is 100 TeV. So that gave us the idea. Probably we have a much better idea about the inside of a source. So this is the concept. Basically, we're using full telescopes to make a crust, which is equivalent to a has. And then we have eight of them to cover the whole array of the one, one square kilometer to do this kind of measurement. Hopefully, we can reach the angular resolution of 0 0.06 degree. And then, uh, you know, this kind of, if there are two sources inside, then the nozzle can do this and the uh, nectar probably can do this. Okay. So that means, that's my uh, conclusion. Um, basically, uh, nozzle is a survey facility for uh, UHE sources in Northern Sky. It is uh, fully operated since uh, uh, July, 2021 with the a rate of the one billion event per day. Uh, we have a strong uh, separation power between gamma rays and the cosmic ray background. The photon ar arrival direction and the energy measurements are calibrated by using a stent candle, um, which is the crab nebula, and also now the GRV. And uh, we already found uh, uh, after the first glass with the half of the detector, uh, 12 pavatrons. And now we have much more and uh, will be published very soon. You, 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 you keep in tune uh, the, the new catalog um, by Lawson. Uh, we did this, uh, you know, uh, in-depth analysis for uh, first of all, the crab nebula, which is published. And then now there are another one will be published soon for, uh, uh, for, the, for the signal stretching as well. The cosmic ray origin identify, identification has a very difficult, difficult situation for those kind of a complicated source. Particularly, you have many things inside. Uh, we have to have, uh, you know, uh, the, the ICT technique that is uh, pretty in, essential to, uh, to do uh, the, the complete job. Okay, that's my talk. Thank you very much for attention.